Mm-hmm. God, I cannot wait for season four. I know it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, I, uh, I, I am wondering though, and I, I could definitely use some advice on this. Um, re- recently, my checks from the Koch brothers have just stopped coming in. Um, Ugh. It's you know it, it's causing some problems between Ryan and I. He's uh he he's he's probably going to quit if he doesn't get his six figures. That is unreal. Can you believe that? With all the all the exposure you're giving them, it's un, it's unbelievable that they would cut you short like that. I know. I mean, I'm I'm a good shill, and Ryan's a good shill. And since I've been, you know, mm-hmm. a big Republican shill, you'd think that you know they would like what they're getting, but they're not. So I've been thinking. Well, let's yeah. Let's be honest. There's a lot of competition in the market right now as for as far as shills go. I mean, look at who's in Congress. Yeah. You got to compete with McConnell. I mean, for Pete's sakes. Which is what I kind of want to bring up because I don't. Well, let's put it this way. If I want to keep doing the podcast because I think it's fun, but I think I just need to be me, you know, the the actual Remso or, you know, my, my actual birth name, Shay Remso, which is, you know, Slim Shady. I, uh, I see. I see where you are. I'm picking up what you're laying down. More, more like Shay Remso Guevara Martinez. I never brought up my full name. The, the W is just to throw people off. But, you know, I'm, I'm thinking. One. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about coming out as you know you know oh uh, a red a red yeah um a, a, now a communist just, yeah i mean just 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 blatant communist uh now to to be very clear are you talking about a, a real communist or a democratic communist because those are not the same thing I, I feel like i need to double down and just go full marx just like the folks at george mason university um berkeley i mean i i I do, I do think that you know if the violent revolution is going to come i might as well be the one up there you know uh, well I, I i will admit like i mean communists have a pretty good track record with you know violent revolutions followed by mass murder now look i it's i know it's hard you know some days are harder than others when you're in politics and sometimes i know we all just want to go full you know off off the wagon right i mean you somebody cuts you off on the drive to work and you look at them and you go you know i don't only, i don't only want to eliminate you i want to kill off your whole class I, I know we all have those moments but i mean think about it you you really got to put that aside because the consequences of you going that direction i mean you could you could change a lot of minds you could lead a lot of people where colleges and universities are already leading them and we don't want that that sounds like some bourgeois logic that only a white cis male would say. Unreal. Can, are you really going to no. slap me with that right I, now? I Don't thought you, know I, thought you I would. I thought you would be more accepting and tolerant. But you know, if I'm going to go full commie, I might as well come out. You know what? I'm going to freaking tweet this to the world. Welcome to Rando Republic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is not just another episode, but this is episode 100 of the Remso Republic. Thank you so much for tuning in, old listeners and new listeners alike. I'm your host, as always, Remso W. Martins, broadcasting to you coast to coast from the one and only Commonwealth of Virginia. This is the episode I've been waiting for for a long time. You know, for a lot of you out there that have been with us since season one, almost a year and a half ago, I... I pretty much told you up front, we'll be lucky if we have five good episodes and then as long as those are decent and we could get more than like two people tuning in, we'll keep this going. But so far we've hit a hundred episodes. Our sponsors have just been absolutely amazing. We've expanded over to seven networks by the time you're listening to this, Um, you know, from producer Ryan, Team Republic, Juliana, everyone that's helped us get this far. Thank you. Because if there's one thing about independent media that kind of sucks is that you know you are actually independent it does take a lot of blood sweat and tears to get to this point and to hit a you know a hundredth episode of a show like this to break over a hundred and fifty thousand downloads in such a short amount of time with like you know a freaking budget of nothing i mean it's 
it, it does truly bring me back to when we only were able to push out maybe one or two episodes a month. And I had to ask a friend to loan me 50 bucks to buy a microphone. And now we're, we're doing absolutely great. So thank you all. And for those of you that are new and you're wondering why I'm rambling, let me go ahead and just introduce you one thing about the show. We have one mission here at the Remster Republic. It's this, and we try and do it well each and every episode. We want to make freedom fun again. And for this special monumentous moment, I went ahead and brought somebody who's really been a role model for how I do things going back to 2013 to kind of, you know, rewind things all the way back to then. Let me tell you, I was a freshman in college. I was going to Marion Military Institute out in the middle of God knows where Alabama. And I was talking to a friend of mine. We were thinking about starting up a, you know, the school's first libertarian students club. Uh, we called it Missile for Mary Military Institute Students for Liberty. And we were talking and we were the only people that were really interested in this. And as I was just getting into the ideas of liberty, he went ahead and gave me a book to borrow for a couple weeks during the summer. And it was this, Don't Hurt People and Don't Take Their Stuff. It, e- easy enough title, but I, I read it about three times that summer. I read it on the bus to the airport. I read it again this time, you know, writing down the quotes I liked from there on the plane going back to Virginia. And then I read it again once I got home to make sure I took everything out of there. And I mean, the author, Matt Kibbe, he he really did influence the way I saw things. And it was such an honor for me about a year later to actually go be an intern at Freedom Works. And after that, I started getting involved in, you know, just being a, a petty blogger here and there. There, you know, political bloggers were a dime a dozen. Went ahead and worked on some campaigns. And, you know, the, the, the rest is history. It's how we ultimately got here. But everything starts with an idea. It started with me just because of, I met with a friend that was interested in the same type of ideas as me. And he was willing to lend me a book that ultimately changed my life. So I want to go ahead and stop rambling and introduce our guest. I may have given away a moment ago, but ladies and gentlemen, you've seen him over at Conservative Review. He's the founder of Free the People. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Kibbe. Matt, welcome to the program. Hey, Remso. It's awesome to be with you. So, Matt, it's... You know, it, it's been years since that book came out. Um, you know, I still remember picking up a copy of Hostile Takeover as soon as I finished reading um, Don't Hurt People and Don't Take Their Stuff. I mean, the, the world is a pretty crazy place. The guy from The Apprentice is president. Um, I mean, I, I feel like we're walking into the American Twilight Zone sometimes. And even though we saw a large number of people kind of turn away from that kind of libertarian wave we saw with the rise of people like Rand Paul and others. Um, I think everyone is just kind of trying to figure out where things are. I mean, the dust is settling, but it's been months and months and months after the election to kind of start things off a little simply, you know, is this a good time for Liberty or is it, you know, or are things looking darker? Oh, I think it's a, I think it's a great time for Liberty. And I'm not just saying that to put on a, put a smiley face on it. I think that we're at a unique moment in history where all of the old top-down institutions that used to dictate to us what we would think and, and where we would go and what we would do are falling apart before our eyes. And, and, and that's happened in media, that's happened at universities, it's happened in how we choose where music it happens all over the place, except in our politics, where the two-party duopoly still really dictated everything and it's a closed system and and made it very difficult for different ideas or different types of candidates to break through. But we're seeing even that fall apart. So as a, as a small L libertarian who flirts with big L libertarianism, um, I'm convinced that this particular moment in history is shifting all of the power back to the end user. It's, it's breaking up all of those cartels that controlled ideas and, and access to politics and everything else. And this has to be that moment when the ideas of liberty go viral, and that's that's why um, that's that's why Left Freedom Works has started a new organization called Free the People. That's that's why the subtitle on that book that you just mentioned. I argued with my publisher about this, but they wanted to put the subtitle of a libertarian manifesto because even then they saw that that people were sort of curious. I call them liberty curious. Um, people are are trying to figure out what they believe and whether or not there's an alternative to 
one size fits all Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. And, and I think I think this is our moment and, and, this, and we got to do something. We got to we got to take advantage of this. I completely agree. And, you know, this is sometimes I'll go back and I'll read some of the old articles I've had published. I'll go back and listen to an episode from like a year ago when I talked about something kind of controversial to see if I've kind of switched with things. And, you know, when we look at the past year, you know, for me, for example, I was since I was old enough to vote, I was a member of the Libertarian Party. And then after working on the Republican campaign, working for, you know, now Congressman Tom Garrett, who's pushing for the federal decriminalization of marijuana and many other things, uh, you know, I decide, you know, I, I see a good opportunity within the Republican Party. And I know last year, you basically, you know, I know you were a registered Republican for the longest time, but you went and spoke at the Libertarian National Convention and with Alternative Pack and everything, you support Gary Johnson. I know you, you're flirting with big L libertarians. But my biggest thing was for the longest time during the primary season, during the actual general election, I thought the Republican Party was doomed. And as soon as Trump became president, they were all going to kowtow for his, you know, fair trade, America first policies, his interventionism. But what we've seen with everything from the House Freedom Caucus to what Senators Mike Lee and Ted Cruz have done, we've seen that the Republicans haven't really fallen to this massive groupthink. Has that surprised you the way it surprised me? And, you know, would you ever consider going back to being a Republican, at least registered in that case? Well, I, I think um, I'm agnostic on political parties, to be honest with you, because I'm, you know, like you, I'm motivated by ideas and, and values and and politics is just a vehicle to either promote or or harm those ideas. So I, I think we should we should always have an open mind. It's it's you know, we we spent a lot of time trying to take over the Republican Party. You may remember my old slogan, we had to beat the Republicans before we could beat the Democrats. And and I think the lasting legacy of, of the Tea Party movement is the what. And I, I, I guess so it's bigger than the Freedom Caucus. Um, but it, I call it the Liberty Caucus, and it's the Mike Lees and Rand Pauls and Justin Amashas and Thomas Massey's. Um, not only are these guys, and there's a bunch of others too, um, not only are these guys pro-liberty, they're also independent of the political apparatus of the Republican Party. They don't depend on them for fundraising. They don't depend on them to get out the vote. Um, they've, they've all survived in their own way very serious attempts by the GOP establishment to take them out um, again and again, in some cases like like Justin Amash. So they, they have the the power and the, and the freedom and the values to, to take on a Republican president, which which didn't used to be the case. So I think I think there's a lot going on. There's structural changes. They happen to be the kind of legislators that were impossible to find 10, 15 years ago. Uh, Ron Paul was an anomaly back then, and now it's now it's it's more normal to have have liberty legislators that are willing to do that. So it's 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 a it's telling that they're willing to fight. But I will say that I've I've still quite disappointed that so many Republicans have fallen in line when when Trump is is willing to 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 wield that same executive power that we were so all so apoplectically against when it was Barack Obama. I, I do see a lot of partisanship where where both parties are completely comfortable with abuse of, of government power as long as it's your guy doing it. Exactly. So we're going to go ahead and keep this conversation going, but first we've got to hit our first commercial break to keep the lights on. Folks, hang on tight. We've got Matt Kibbe from Free the People on. We'll be back in a moment. Let's make freedom fun again. Join the Rimso Republic on Patreon today, 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 today. Hey, that's pretty good. Take the show on the go by subscribing to the Rimso Republic on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, and YouTube. Don't be left out. Hey, this is Beth from the Gun Blog Variety Cast reminding y'all that this podcast is a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out all the other great podcasts at selfdefenseradio.net. It's time to shake up your podcast feed, folks, by subscribing to Lions of Liberty, the only libertarian variety show out there. Spend Mondays with me, Mark Clare, as I feature in-depth interviews with great names in the libertarian community 
and fun roundtable discussions. Electric Liberty Land with me, Brian McWilliams, every Wednesday, your weekly dose of comedy, culture, and liberty. And Felony Fridays with me, John Odermatt, where I expose injustice in the broken criminal justice system. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and at lionsofliberty.com. Make sure to visit libertarianwingmedia.com, where you can find articles written by libertarians all over the world on all of today's issues. Check out our podcast network with monthly and weekly podcasts. Check out our libertarian t-shirt store with t-shirts like Make Markets Free Again and Make Markets Not War. And you too can become an author at Libertarian Wing Media and write what you want, when you want. Just email alexmerced at alexmerced.com. Thank you very much. Mac, thank you so much for picking up the phone, man. I, I got to run some format ideas by you. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. So, I- insanity. Just blatant insanity. Um, you know, a little bit of race baiting, some conspiracy theories, get a few uh, supermodels who sell cigarettes on the side to children. And I'm thinking maybe I could go from the Remso Republic to something bigger. And I've got this name, kind of a ripoff, but, I mean, people like cheesy stuff. Remso Wars. How about that? Remso Wars. I kind of like it. it. It has a it has a certain ring to it, you know? Yeah. Okay. But he, here's the biggest thing. Should, should, I, should I sound different than I usually talk? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because if I'm going to get rambunctious, I want people to think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm me, but I'm not the other guy. But I remind them of the other guy, even though they come, come here, listen to me, but they want a newer version of me, kind of like the other guy, but not like the other guy. Does that make yeah, sense? you know, yeah, I think that's kind of a decent idea. You know, kind of like a Bruce Wayne Batman type of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. So we're we're already planning season four right now, and um, the frogs are still gay. No one's really talking about that, but I'm I'm thinking that would be something good to lead with. What do you think? You know what? These are the issues that need to be addressed. Okay, I I completely agree, and. I'm thinking I'm going to start off with folks. I had a typically regularly scheduled program for you today, but you know, I'm, I'm just seeing these frogs turning gay and I'm just tired of them putting things in the water. That makes a, a freaking frogs gay. How, how's that? How's that? You know what? I think you nailed it. Uh, how, how would you do it? How would you do it? I don't know. I think you got to go a little deeper. I think you got to be a little more aggressive about it. You know, you got you got to get that emotion in there, and it's got to just be like you got to be shaking a little bit, and then start banging the table. So it's just like gay frogs. How, how's that? How's that? Oh, I'm getting a bit that, of a migraine. That, that's better. That's better. You got to get the blood pressure up. <sighs> okay. Um, what, what what's a what's an alt right buzzword? Globalist. How about globalist? Oh yes. So should I go globalist. like Should I go like Trump the globalist or like Stone the globalist or should, should I go like the globalists? I like that last one. Which which one? I got them confused just now because the, the blood pressure is just going up crazy. Uh, that that tends to happen, you know. The passion gets to you. I think you got to get that that deep, you know, the globalist. You know, you got to get that. The globalist. Globalist. Yeah. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> Folks, welcome back. We're going to continue our conversation from earlier. Um, you know, Matt, I, one thing I always really appreciated from your time at FreedomWorks and even what you and Josh and Logan, the whole team have been able to do now is that you, you were always willing to work with people, even people that weren't libertarians. I mean, for the longest time as a, as a young adult, I'll admit, I didn't want to work with people that weren't conservatives or people that weren't libertarians. I just thought, you know, they're constantly against us. We can't ever 
work with them. But, you know, getting to, you know, see what you guys were doing at FreedomWorks back when I was there, it really did change my mind. And since then, you know, I've actually been able to not just work with people on the left, but actually, you know, befriend some of them. I understand where their passions are. I understand how their worldview works. And while we're not going to get to maybe even 50% of agreement on issues, when it comes to finding something that truly does matter and something that we truly can work with each other on, that is something that, you know, I'll put away all my gripes and complaints and I'll work with them 100% on that because the purpose is to move it towards liberty. Um, right now, I was hoping that a lot of the Democrats that were upset with the way that Hillary Clinton, you know, basically destroyed the Democratic Party, I thought that maybe they'd see, okay, see, it's not just these progressive policies that aren't working, but the Democratic establishment isn't looking out for your best interest. And some have just, you know, gotten in line and they're pushing for impeachment and everything else. But I, I've got some that are saying, you know what, even though I was a Bernie guy, we need to talk about drug reform. We need to talk about criminal justice reform. We need to talk about interventionist policies. And then sometimes I see them on TV, you know, setting Berkeley on fire. So I guess my question is, you know, is there still an opportunity for us to coalition of the left sometimes, or have they just become so polarized it's not even worth doing? Oh, well, I, I think uh, we, we spend a lot of time, as, as you probably know, we spend a lot of time in conversations and, and even collaborations with, with progressives right now. And it, it started with criminal justice reform, and, and we've, we've had what I would call a, an, an authentic transpartisan working relationship there. And, you know, bipartisanship to me is when both sides pretend to work together just for the sake of a press release. And, a, <laughs> and a, but, but, you know, postpartisan, transpartisan, whatever you want to call it, there's, there's common values there. And I, I love to point out that at a, at a very superficial level a Bernie Sanders speech and a Ron Paul speech have a lot of similarities. There's a lot of raging against the machine, they're raging against the Federal Reserve, they're raging against permanent war and crony capitalism and the surveillance state. And, you know, of course, the difference is, is what, are, what are the solutions to those problems? Because all of those problems are about the concentration of government power. So I feel like, like uh, libertarians and constitutional conservatives and classical liberals have, have the answers to these problems. But more importantly, and, and this goes back to this, this, this libertarian moment, I think that all of these young independents, they're, they're registered independents and they're used to choosing everything, you know, their music, their friends a la carte. And then they go to this, this two-party duopoly and they feel like they're shopping in a mall in Caracas. There's absolutely nothing. And, and they're curating their ideas and, and their political points of view, the same way that they curate everything else. So I think, I think in terms of, of reaching a mass audience, we absolutely need to be talking to audiences that we don't think are ready to hear um, what, what we have to say. But, you know, that starts with listening to them, not just, not just telling them what to think, because that's precisely the way you lose a millennial today is to try to dictate from the top down what they should believe. Let, let them figure it out and, and maybe we can help them see where we're coming from. That makes a lot of sense. And I kind of want to pivot a little bit. Um, one part I really remember from uh, Hostile Takeover was when you were talking about Andrew Breitbart. And the thing that Andrew Breitbart constantly brought up was, you know, politics is downstream of culture. And what, what I've tried to do with my show especially is, you know, it's not always politics. I've had a lot of comic book artists and comedians and you know, just people that have nothing to do with even, you know, libertarian politics at all. I've had them on because, you know, I want to diversify my audience, but I also just want to have fun conversations. I want to take that Breitbart model and, you know, make it work. And I've seen so many other people do it and they're doing fantastic. But, you know, that's just me and my echo chamber to a large extent. Um, do you think that libertarians and conservatives have been good at, you know, engaging the culture instead of just focusing on the policy end? Because it's really hard to get people to go out to the ballot box if they're not inspired by your policies to begin with. Have we succeeded in engaging the culture? Um, I, I think we're starting to. I, I don't think generally we've been terribly good at it, in large part because people my age um, became libertarian because they read a book. And and we're all sort of book geeks that would sit around, um, you know, um, studying the footnotes from human action and, and all sorts of ridiculous things that libertarians do. Um, but Andrew Breitbart was right. You got you got to get 
you got to get upstream of, of politics into the popular culture. And certainly that's, if you look at what Free the People is doing, and you know, you know my team, we, we hired um, comic book artists and, and actors and, and te- young technologists that, that know a lot about um, how to get into that stream. And I, I think we I think we need to be better at it. And, and so much of so much of our attempts to get into the culture, you look at the, the, the movies and the videos that have been made. They're so self-consciously focused on making sure that that people get the message and, and they sort of miss the point. And I, I, I love the idea of, of, of using comedy. And of course, we use that an alternative pack with our with our Gary Johnson ad where we you know we used a comedian who played dead Abe Lincoln to, to have fun with the, with the failed ideas of the two party duopoly. Do do you think we're, you know, catching on to it? Because, you know, I I see it happening slowly, but you know, it's like a lot of things. I'm afraid that for a lot of people, they'll just think it's a fad and then it's like, okay, just, just get back to the white papers now. Um, you know, have you seen a growth in this or do you think it's just slowly going and it might go stagnant? Because, you know, sometimes I'm really optimistic when I see something really awesome. You know, one of my favorite, um, you know, uh, heavy metal artist is Eric July. He's a Rothbardian rapper. And I think of that and it's like, wow, I I wonder if people are going to get tired of that type of stuff at some point, because I've seen it so often where people are, you know, they're like, oh, the change is coming. The change is here. And then it just kind of dies out. Do you think the tide is on our side? Oh, I, I think I think it's um, it's happening even faster than we can see, and part of it's part of it's generational, and part of it's institutional stickiness. You know, our greatest institutions in the liberty movement were developed when when books were a thing and bookstores actually existed, and that the way you distributed ideas was was via paper. And some of them have been too slow to 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 evolve. But you go to a Young Americans for Liberty or a Students for Liberty gathering anywhere in this country, frankly, anywhere in the world. And what you find is a broad, diverse audience of of people that aren't just book geeks anymore. They're 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 in the popular culture They're they're They understand technology. They understand video production. They they understand how to translate ideas into a story. So I, I, th- I think it's going to happen big and sudden. And it's, it's, it's true to the age we live in where, where old institutions disappear overnight and they're replaced with, with some young guy with a podcast trending. Right. Right. Anyway, sir, we're going to wrap up the show in a little bit, but first we've got to hit our final commercial break. Folks, hang on. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, it's Jen Gray with the Leading Liberty Podcast, and you're listening to Remso Republic. Visit RemsoRepublic.com for all available content. Hey guys, Tim Preuss here, and I wanted to take a minute and invite you to stop over to PreussPodcast.com and give our show a listen. We've got in-depth commentary on the issues that matter to you. These hookers. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking whores are out there. These hookers, man, I tell you. Yeah, that's like the (laughs) most contact I've had with the hooker. Is them yelling at you. yelling at me on Twitter. (laughs) We break down the most pressing issues of our time. This large lady with, like, tight clothing on. Not appropriately linked tight clothing either. And we get the most intelligent analysis from friends of ours like Jeffrey Tucker. Uh, you pulled over engine trouble and, and what happened, what happened? Uh, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's, uh, oh, I, oh, God. Seriously, though, we love putting on a show that both entertains and educates. We're growing and we'd be thrilled if you joined us. Check out PreussPodcast.com for more. That's P-R-E-U-S-S podcast.com. Make sure to subscribe to all the podcasts on the Libertarian Wing Media Podcast Network on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher, such as the Alex Merced cast, with interesting interviews with interesting people every week. Breaking progressives, spending time every week breaking down left-wing narratives and showing what's real and what's fake. Economics Why Not, a weekly look at economics and applying economic principles to daily life. 
Better Today, a weekly podcast where we take a look on ways to improve your life and be better today. Libertarian Commons is a podcast where we play audio from the video archives of Alex Merced from his videos dating back to 2008. Liberty Public Access, a podcast where anyone can submit an episode. Submit your episodes to Alex Merced at alexmerced.com. Have you been wanting to start your own podcast? Then subscribe to Podcast and Blogging Tips and Tricks, a weekly podcast about how to host your podcast, how to produce your podcast, and how to market your podcast. We'll be adding some monthly podcasts to the lineup soon, including Make Markets Free Again, a monthly look at what's going on in markets and regulation all over the world, and the Free VST podcast, looking at free VST instruments for electronic music producers. Listen to these podcasts by going to libertarianwingmedia.com or subscribing on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. And if you enjoy the podcast, tell your friends and leave a positive review on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. everyone welcome back we've got a few extra minutes with matt so you know just want to let things kind of go where they go at this point but uh matt you know you brought up students for liberty young americans for liberty earlier i I remember as a as a teenager when they were just starting off i remember the first um y'all conference i went to um i ended up you know going there with about three of the guys from my student group and we were shoved in a hotel room with like five other people and it was in the most seediest part of tennessee it's where the conference was and i mean when we went there it was just a whole bunch of us crammed in the small lecture room and i was like wow i'm i'm never going to one of these again and then the next year i ended up going to them and you know the accommodations didn't necessarily improve but the number of people that showed up were in the hundreds we got larger spaces the quality of speakers we got were just you know phenomenal i mean it you know bill fraser tom wood so many awesome people and as i've seen it progress over the years they're getting better quality the people getting involved are just phenomenal you know movers and shakers and it is really inspiring for me to see so many like-minded people because for the longest time in my life i felt like i was just alone in my ideas raging against the machine and then i turn on to fox news and they're shitting on millennials constantly so i i see the i see the good and the bad but you know, as we're going forward, I know it's really hard to make predictions with the way the world is. But when it comes to the millennial generation, are you more optimistic that we'll start making better, you know, better solutions available that actually lean on the ideas of individual liberty and free markets? Or do you think the Bernie Sanders crowd is just going to outpopulate us all? Oh, I, I think I think millennials are, are very persuadable. And I think a lot of them are are a lot more libertarian than they know. They are the liberty curious generation. Their definition of socialism has nothing to do with socialism. It has to do with cooperation. Their definition of capitalism has nothing to do with capitalism. It has to do with cronyism. So I think part of it is definitional and and we got to find that common language. We got to be willing to take a lot of risks because I I think the real profound breakthroughs are going to come from disruption. And part of that is talking to to people that, that, that you don't think you can connect with, but we, we got to win this generation. It's the, it's the only way that, that liberty moves forward, but they have a chance to Google stuff when you and I didn't. They have a chance to, to find stuff when that Marxist professor is telling them what to think and they're like, that doesn't seem quite right. Uh, they, can, they can fact check that guy and they can, they can self-curriculate the same way that Justin Amash did when he didn't like what he was getting from his his law professors, and he didn't like seeing what he was hearing from the Republican or Democratic parties in the district, he, he went online and figured it out for himself. I think everybody's doing that now. So our tools have to change, our institutions have to change, and we just need to be willing to bet everything on liberty. That's the bottom line. Matt, we've got to wrap up the show, but you know, for that person who this might be their first episode you know, tuning into the show for that person that's still liberty curious because they like what we're saying, but, you know, they don't know if they want to just get more involved or just learn more about it because they either, you know, might feel like they're wasting their time or they're afraid that their whole worldview will change. And next thing you know, they're, 
you know, scream and, and the Fed and stuff like that. What, what What's your message to those people that are just kind of like sticking their toe into the liberty pool? I'll just call it that. Be cheesy for a moment. I, I, I think you have to I think you have to have an open mind about how we can solve these 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 common problems that we all agree on. And it, and you look at things like criminal justice and, and the abuse of police power and, and all of these issues where you have this sort of cross partisan agreement and you look at what the solutions are. The solutions all come back to community and liberty and people working together to solve problems on a, on a voluntary basis. Um, if we can find common agreement there, I hate to tell you, you're a libertarian. <laughs> Perfect. Matt, for people that, you know, they want to get in touch with Free the People, they want to learn more about what you're doing at Conservative Review and everything else, how can they do that? Uh, go to freethepeople.org. Um, uh, most of what we do is on social media, so definitely check us out on, on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, uh, particularly important, check out check out our beer videos. They're the most profound things you will ever see. You know what? I, I got to jump in real fast before we wrap it up. Uh, New Agorist Brewery. H- how is their beer? Because I had Alexander Meyer on, and I'm still waiting for my package to come. I- is it worth the wait or not? Oh, yeah. Their beer is fantastic. Um, he brought a, a whole cooler at uh, to Freedom Fest uh, last year or the year before, I can't remember anymore. Very experimental. Talk about disruption. I, I think I think he's a great example of what's happening in an in industry. And it's all about entrepreneurship. It's always about beating big beer and beating that collusion with big government. And, and it's about taking risks. So I, you're going to be happy with the beer and you're going to be really happy with what it represents. Sounds great. Sounds great. Matt Kibbe from Free the People. Thank you so much for coming on the program, sir, especially for our 100th episode. Um, you know, th- this really means a lot to me. And I know my viewers, are, you know, they're loving it. So I greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Ramzo. All right, folks. We this is this is it for now, at least for the next month and a half while we're gonna take a break, get ready for season four. Thank you so much for all your support. And just remember, each time you you even think that you like something, go ahead and you know help help it out. You have to invest in the world you want to see. You have to help create the future that you dream about and make it a reality. I mean, don't let that spark go out by irreplaceable spark. You help it out. And what's one thing you could do? Well, you know. We are kind of in the off season. Go ahead and help us out by leaving us a rating and review on iTunes. Eighty five percent of all podcast listeners listen through iTunes, so iTunes is the best way to go. Leave us a five star rating and review, and share it with your friends. And you know, I want to give a shout out to the Self Defense Radio Network. They help us out so much. Deplorable Radio and the Halsey News Network, and all those other great networks, sponsors, and amazing people we have taken us to levels far and beyond what Ryan and I ever thought would come from, you know, a friend loaning us 50 bucks for a cheap mic. As always, be good to your neighbor, go treat yourself, and I'm Remster W. Martinez America. Good night. Stay connected to Liberty's Rabble Rouser on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with the latest episodes, blogs, and other available content. What are you waiting for?